So it's April, and this is when Infertility Awareness Month and all of these things start to happen. And I have gotten a lot of press over the last few weeks in New York and in LA all about you know, IVF and fertility and what people need to know, you know, the CDC getting banned, all that stuff. But one question that I keep on getting asked in these interviews is, is there hope? And whether it's, is there hope for women who are over 40 or is there hope for women who haven't experienced success? And I had a hard time answering that because my gut is screaming, yes, of course there is hope. But let me take you through kind of the process when I really have, whether it's a client that is considering working with me or a current client going, should I even continue trying to have a baby? I want to take you through that process because I feel like a process instead of me just being like, oh my gosh, of course there is, right? Helps. People like a formula. I love a formula. So here is the formula I tend to go through. So it's kind of micro to macro. A lot of times if I'm teaching a concept, I do macro to micro, I'm doing the opposite. So micro, what does the data say? So many times because we're not making blastocysts or we're not making normal blastocysts, we immediately go to this will never work or we're making embryos and they're not implanting. So for me, the first data piece I look at are, do we have eggs? Are they fertilizing? Are they growing to day three embryos? Okay, that's the first data point that, I look at, I mean, I've even seen people not make it to day three embryos and then make it to day three embryos. But let me just be more conservative because literally I've, I feel like I've seen it all. And that's why with me in your corner, I'm like, Ooh, anything is possible. But let me just be more conservative and say, if you're not even making it to fertilization, okay, you can't even make a day three embryo. It can't start to grow. That could be a problem. I say could because when I look at a pro somebody's protocol, a lot of times I'm shocked that that protocol was done because I believe it will never, ever, ever, ever work. And in fact, it could hurt your chances for success. So pending your protocol, let's assume you have a protocol that I would look at and go, love it. Okay. If we're not making it to fertilization or to day three, I'm going to look at the eggs. I'm going to look at the sperm. I'm going to look at the protocol. Okay, but if we can't get there, yeah, that is a data point that's like, that's not great, right? That's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot harder. Again, can you turn it around from there? Yes. And I've seen it happen many times. I, I know we have a path to parenthood. Megan just came to my head. You know, she was stage four endometriosis. She was basically in, in premenopause. She had severe diminished ovarian reserve. And they said, you need an egg donor and a surrogate. And she did not need either for her young man. So if you need data to tell you if it's possible, that is the first thing to look at. Are you making eggs? Is there sperm? Is it fertilizing? Can it at least grow to a day three embryo? And you're using your perfect protocol and its exact execution of it. Number two is, is feel. What I mean by that is I often have people come to me going, I feel like if we change the strategy or change the protocol or if I made some change, I feel like it could still work. Okay, I'm going with that, right? And again, this isn't about false hope. I'm going to look at the data. I'm, and my data, of course, is going to include, and this is something you can do, how did the follicles grow? Were they stunted from the beginning? Do we possibly need a, a, a new protocol? But how you feel like, if I just knew what to do, I feel like it could work a lot better. Or I feel like I'm not quite done trying with my own eggs. And I just want to know for sure that before I invest anymore, right, this is right. Hold on to that feeling. It's not you're crazy. It's not that you're trying to push something that's, that's not possible. It is a real, true gut instinct. And I take that very seriously. And then the last thing when I'm trying to help someone decide, should they keep doing IVF? Is there any hope here? This kind of goes along with what do you feel, but what do we know about the situation? And here is where I will say, I know you can do it. I know you can do anything. I don't want you unnecessarily spending your, your, your money, your time, your energy, your egg reserve on treatments that don't work. But if you know, you have that deep knowing in your heart that it's possible, there is absolutely hope for you. 
And I don't even like the word hope, but that's what everybody was asking me. Is there hope? I like the word knowing. I have a knowing. I don't have hope, right? It's not luck or chance. It's a knowing. And when someone has a knowing that they are meant to be a mom and they are willing, right, to do what it takes, that's absolutely a time where I know we are not done getting this baby earth side. And typically, if you've been in this journey a while, that knowing is fate. <laughs> I remember, I remember knowing and then not And then being like, this is just ridiculous because it's taking so very long. I thought I knew. But in my heart, I was meant to have another child. And though I did everything very wrong, I'll admit, right? But I also think that I was being qualified because if I came to you being like, hey, I know how it feels. I did one round of IVF and have all my babes. You may not want to listen to me. But I had a knowing. I was going to be a mom again. And though it seemed impossible after years and years and years, I knew it was a little bit possible. And that's ultimately what kept me going. I don't want you going through what I did. That's why I do what I do. But I also don't want you to deny yourself of that knowing because other people are telling you, "Mm, it's, it's not possible. You might need another strategy. You might need to pivot. But don't ever lose that knowing, even if it's just a little bit. You're hoping to knowing that you were meant to be a mom. So overall, if the data says, yeah, you can make embryos and there's nothing that is blocking implantation, that's another part of it, right? Do we know nothing's blocking implantation? And how do you feel? Do you feel like a different strategy could work? Do you feel like I can do this? right? If I just knew what to do next or what to change. And then last, is there that deep down knowing, even if it just squeaks out sometimes because it's been so long, if there's that deep down knowing that you are meant to be a mom or meant to be a mom again, there is absolutely a possibility. I don't even want to say hope, a possibility and a likelihood that you are going to be a mom or a mom again. So when you are doubting if you should keep doing, keep going, I always say, let's check the data. How do you feel and what do you know? Well, that was our uncovering for the day. If you have a feeling that your IVF protocols or strategies could use a second opinion, start with our website, TashaBlasi.com for resources and even a free discovery call where we can learn about your specific IVF needs and see how we can help.